Hey, what's up guys? Michael here, Shot City Yacker. Today's video is gonna be a walkthrough, step-by-step -step on how to install the Yak Attack grid lock through hole wiring kit here, as well as the all new XL version of this grid lock wiring through hole system here. I'm really excited about the XL version in particular because there's a need for it. Uh, for those of us that are running, uh, you know, your live scope systems, if you're running multiple fish finders or you just have a lot of cabling, uh, this is gonna be the perfect solution for those bigger, thicker cables uh, they have the bigger connectors that you needed just a bigger hole in the kayak to run it through there This is gonna be it for you, and I'm excited about this I've been using the standard ones uh, for some time now and they work fantastic for for your more smaller regular size cabling But your live scope cables that are thick anything else like that This is gonna be the solution for you So we're gonna do the installation on these on my kayak here. I'm gonna walk you through it step by step We're gonna take a look at all the components that you're gonna need So you make sure you have everything in order before you even get started and then I'll demonstrate and go through the actual installation on the kayak here behind me. And real quick, if you need these parts right here for yourself and for your rigging, check the link down below in the description. You can grab it right from there and it does support the channel and it's greatly appreciated. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start this whole install. Now with all the components laid out on the table, let's start on the left side and talk about the standard size uh, grid lock through hole wiring kit here. When you do order this, you get a pair. So you can punch two holes into your kayak and this will cover both of those. Uh, inside the seal package here, you have two of the through holes themselves with all of the necessary screws. You're also gonna get three kind of trees here of the rubber gaskets with varying hole sizes, including the fully sealed one so that if you're only gonna use one side of the through hole, you can fully seal the other side so no water leaks into it. For the standard size, you're gonna need a one inch uh, spade or hole saw and that's gonna be the size of the hole that this will cover. So make sure you get the right size for it. Again, it's a one inch that's required for the standard size. On the right side here for the XL kit, same kind of a process. You're gonna get two through holes with all the uh, screws that, that you need. So that's covered. And then you're gonna get four of these rubber gasket trees with varying hole sizes. And these are noticeably bigger hole sizes. You see the difference, so much bigger here. This again was intended for guys that are running those bigger cables for your live imaging and so on. Uh, and so same kind of concept, you're gonna get some of these gaskets are fully sealed. So if you're only, only gonna run one cable through it, you can seal it all off. For the XL, you're going to need a inch and a half hole saw or spade for that hole cut, okay? Again, inch and a half or uh, hole saw or spade for that hole. And then the last thing we're gonna need here is a 1 8 inch drill bit, and this is what we're gonna use to punch the holes to actually mount the through holes through here. You gotta pilot those holes so the screws will go in there. And this is gonna be used for either one. This is the universal 1 8 inch, whether you're getting the regular or the XL to punch and pilot those holes for the screws. And let's not forget about marine goop. Definitely gonna to wanna to use this around those screws and to kind of uh, seal around the bottom sides here um, on the through hole, just makes a watertight seal. All right, so I removed the through hole that was here that we're getting rid of to replace it with the Gridlock XL here. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the tree and I've already started this process. I pulled one off, this is one of the bigger holes here. They're gonna be fully sealed. So what they recommend you do is cut at a little bit of an angle, let's say like a 45, 35, 45 degree across. Don't cut straight into it, cut across a little bit. So we're gonna use some scissors here Kind of go in there and just cut across, just like that, very simple to do, all right? That's how you're gonna put your cabling through there, just like that, okay? So this is one of my bigger cables. This is the uh, cable that goes to the transducer. It's an extension cable from the uh, GLS, GLS 10 black box from my live scope from Garmin. And so we are going to put it in there. Now, this is not gonna be a perfect situation because this cable here is just kind of an awkward cable. It's not fully round. It's like these two cables joined together. You can kind of see that. So this solution, um, and it's no fault of Yak Attack, it's just because how the cable is, it's not gonna fit like super tight, but I'm not too worried about it. The other option here is we can look for a smaller hole and jam it in there, which we'll actually try that. So we'll get this one, which is a little bit smaller here. Hopefully you guys can see this here. I'm in frame. Same thing, we're gonna take it and we're just gonna cut at that angle in there. So we'll try this and jam it in there and see if it's a tighter, at least a tighter fit. Even though it won't fit perfectly within the hole and fill it up, but we can try and get a little bit closer. And actually, 
this will probably be a better option here for this bigger cable. Uh, once we put this down there, it'll pinch it down and it'll at least have less of an opening for water to go in there versus the, the bigger uh, one right there. So we'll give that a shot. We'll try that, we'll leave that there. Um, the other thing I have here is I have two more cables coming out of here. So the way that these are designed is the components go underneath it like this and you'll put the other side here. I'll just grab one of these real quick. And that's how it seats itself, right? That's how it goes on there. So you can tell that there's really designed for, for, for two cables. Um, however, because I have three, I'm gonna have to kind of figure this out. And I might actually do what I just did on this one, which is find the same size hole and then jam these two in there. And that's gonna work for me. And again, this is gonna be your choice on whether or not you're comfortable with that. I am personally comfortable with, with that. I'm not gonna have issues with taking water right here. Um, and if the kayak flips, yeah, water will get in there and we'll deal with it accordingly. All right, we got the other one on the same size here. Cut that one through and we'll jam these two in there. That will work for my purposes. Next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and run the cables through this part. So we'll take these off. We just sized them up. We know they're good. So we're gonna run the cable through here. Pretty self-explanatory, make sure you got it facing upwards. Run your first cable through there. And then I'm gonna run the other ones. And again, you see how big these cable connectors are. This XL allows for it to go right through there very easily compared to some other, uh, other options on the market out there, which are really tough in a lot of cases. So we've got that in there. I've got them all on there, perfect. Now what we're gonna do here is we're going to size it up and we're gonna have to punch our pilot holes in here for the screws. All right, so once you line it up, make sure everything looks good. You got enough clearance and everything. Once we do that, we're just gonna pilot one hole in here. All right, so now that we punched all of the pilot holes for the screws, we've added some marine group on top of it and also some marine group to cover up the previous holes from the screws from the prior uh, uh, through hole that I was using. We're going to go ahead and now put the gaskets together and inside the housing and stick it on on top. Now, something important to note, when you get these gaskets, you're gonna pay attention here. One side is kind of more smooth and the other side has the crevice here. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the crevice part is going facing towards the uh, gridlock here, because that's what seats in there. So just make sure you orientate it properly. Otherwise you could be fumbling around trying to figure out why it doesn't go into the housing properly, okay? So once we do that, we're gonna put the cabling back in here. And then we're going to put it all together inside the housing. Now this could take a little bit of tinkering here. You're trying to jam all these cables together. Um, so be patient, you don't have to finesse it a little bit. We've got one in already, which is perfect. Now we're gonna get the backside in here. So as you're kind of fighting the cables and they're all popping in and out. We had one out and came back in. So just be patient, it's the biggest tip I can give you right here as you're doing this part of the process. It can be a little frustrating, but you wanna have a nice tight seal. So it takes a little bit of time. Okay, we got them all together. Now we're gonna seat it down over those holes. We're gonna hold it. Now, one thing to note here, um, you can't really see this, but you're gonna feel it. Uh, those gaskets underneath that are sealing here, it kind of keeps the, ga the through hole a little elevated. That's why when you screw this down, I recommend doing this. I'm gonna use a, uh, a drill here, but um, if you're just kind of getting started doing this, definitely just manually do this because there's a good possibility you can over screw these. You don't wanna do this. Um, I've been doing this enough to kind of feel it all out, or you can just kind of get the, Get it started with the drill, and then as you get closer to the finishing it off, just take the uh, screw and do it by hand, um, or a screwdriver, do it by hand. So, there it is, it got that one started, perfect. As I'm going through here now, I'm only putting them about halfway down. I wanna get all the screws in all four corners in, and then I'll go around and do another pass to tighten them up and, and finish it all off. All right, now that I got them all in, just gonna kind of just get them down a little bit. And you'll see these corners tighten up and sit against the kayak. Once they're, once those corners have kind of bent down and are flush with the kayak, you've got a good seal. And ladies and gentlemen, that is a pretty clean install. 
I love these uh, gridlock systems because they're flush, unlike some other brands that you know stick out and poke out. These are pretty flush and clean, very easy to do, and we just kind of demonstrated that step-by-step -step process on doing that. So now I'll just connect my cables again to my uh, uh, bracket for my fish finder, and we're done. And it goes without saying that if you're gonna do an install with the standard size version of the Gridlock uh, wiring kit here, it's the same exact process, okay? Just two screws and a smaller hole. Uh, make sure you're using the one inch uh, spade or hole saw for the hole cut into your kayak. But everything I demonstrated with the XL is the same with the standard version size. All right, that's it. It's a pretty simple install with the Yak Attack Gridlock through hole wiring kit. If you need it for your kayak, you're gonna do some rigging and all that stuff, I'll link to it down below where you can grab it and support the channel, I'll definitely appreciate it. If you need any of the gear that I'm using, the fish for my kayak, the builds for my live scope, any and all of that stuff is on the Amazon storefront link, which is down below in the description as well. And if you wanna to learn to kayak fish for salmon and trout, I have some great, great e-courses that are helping many anglers navigate Lake Michigan salmon fishing. You can check those out down below in the links too. Appreciate you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.